2024 Tour of Flanders and a bit of history was made here today in Odenard. Right behind me, the finish line, where Dutchman world champion Matthew Vanderpool of Team Alpesen de Kunik crossed the finish line, raised his bike up in the air, celebrating because he was solo winning this classic, this monument, and not only winning it, winning it for a third time. And yes, I mentioned history because he joins a group of already six riders that have won this race three times in their career. They're the record setters. No other rider has ever won it more than three times. I'm talking about riders like Manyi, Tom Boonen, Fabian Cancellara, and well now we can add Matthew Vanderpool's name to the list. The Dutchman came into the 2024 season, pinpointed the different races, and succeeded. Came in into Milano San Remo, helped his teammate win. That was his first race of the 2024 season after racing a strong cyclocross season that included the World Championship title. Then in E3, Gent Wevelgem winning E3, finishing second in Gent Wevelgem to Mads Pedersen. And then here today, after skipping towards Dwarf Landeren, where Walt Van Aert crashed, wasn't able to race today, he would have been the strongest rival to Matthew Vanderpool. Matthew Vanderpool came into this race as the number one favorite in the World Championship jersey, took victory. And he said the victory was even sweeter winning in the rainbow jersey when I asked him, how does this differ from those other two victories? And the other two victories, they came in 2020. It was a two-up sprint with Walt Van Aert. And it came again in 2022. And last year, after we saw the victory of Tade Pogacar solo, well, it's Matthew Vanderpool again celebrating. In fact, he makes history five times, five consecutive times to be on the podium in the Tour of Flanders, three of those times, victories. And we thought early on into the race that maybe he wasn't looking good because 100 kilometers out, starting with the Wolvenberg and then the Molenberg, things were changing and not changing for Vanderpool's favor. We have that escape up front, but never mind them, we were watching the stars out back. And it was Mads Pedersen, Lidl Trek, who was starting to light things up. Lidl Trek, his team had been riding so well over this classics period, but Mads Pedersen, we saw with the bandages on his knee, was clearly still hurting from that crash in Dwarves that also saw Van Aert crash out. Mads Pedersen tried up front, marked by Johnny Vermeersch, those two would stay away for quite some time, and after some point, we thought when he was only holding 15, 20 seconds, what are you doing up there, Madge? You're clearly losing your chance at victory. And well, in the end, he did, but he really went down fighting and put a great point to the end of the Tour of Flanders with a strong ride out there today. And the other strong team, Visma Lisa Bike, they really made their moves early on, and that was the plan when we spoke to many of the riders and teams at the start today in Antwerp to attack Matthew Vanderpool early on. Visma, they were hitting hard with Dylan Van Barrow. We saw Tim and Mick Van Dyke, the twins out there working as well, Tish Benoit, and of course, our American 24-year-old from Idaho riding and riding strong. They were launching different attacks, putting Matthew Vanderpool on the back foot. At some time, we thought, eh, maybe Vanderpool's not really going well, and maybe this Tour of Flanders is not gonna be one for him but everything changed there on the Kopenberg. That's that famous climb. If you've ever tried to ride it, well, you should, if you never have, come here to Flanders, ride it on your bike. It is hard to stay on the pedals, riding all the way up the climb, let alone in conditions like this, on and off rain all day. Well, it was super slick. At the time, we had one rider up front, the Spaniard, Ivan Garcia Cortina. He slid out, couldn't do it. Then here comes Matthew Vanderpool was launching on the Kopenberg. He said afterwards, told me that that was the point where he wanted to launch his attack. Matteo Jorgensen had been riding so well all day, was following him, distanced a bit off, and then distance behind Matteo Jorgensen. And when the cameras flipped back there, riders, they couldn't stick with those front two, but also they were suffering with traction. And we saw one after another, riders having to get off their bike, and walk up the climb. And that was what happened way back in the day, I think 1987, the Esper Skibby. Then the organizer ran over his bike and decided not to include that climb in the race for many more years to come. We wonder what's gonna happen in 2025 afterwards. Well, that was Vanderpool's launch pad, 47 kilometers to go, I think it was thereabouts. Matteo Jorgensen paced himself wisely, was following Matthew Vanderpool, but at some point the gap was opening up and it was on the B injuries. We knew that Jorgensen wouldn't have the gas to close down on uh, Matthew Vanderpool 
and not even hold a spot for second place because behind they were coming strong. Many UAE riders in that move. Also Teach Benoit, his teammate from Visma Lisa bike. Matthew Vanderpool in the rainbow jersey riding solo here to Odenar to celebrate another victory. Behind everything was getting shaken up. Matthew Vanderpool had to climb three more climbs the famous ones, the Quermont and the Paderberg, to get here to celebrate his victory. Back behind, UAE with four riders on the move were working hard. They had Tim Wellens in there. They also had Nils Pollitt, who would eventually finish third on the podium. Let me get to that story. Luca Mozzato from Arkea Samsic was second. Nils Pollitt, UAE, third on the day. But it wasn't originally like that. It was Mozzato who won the sprint for second over Michael Matthews, who, remember, was in the sprint for the podium there at Milano San Remo. Matthews, though, if you look at the sprint down the left-hand side, he veered a little bit, and the jury thought that was too much. Luca Mazzato said, I didn't think it was too much. I don't think he should be disqualified. I spoke with Nils Pollitt, and he said, well, hey, it's up to the jury to decide. So, and the jury did decide. Nils Pollitt takes third on the day. Michael Matthews, we saw him right off there afterwards, clearly upset with the decision by the jury. It's hard to sprint after 270 kilometers let alone after a day like today over the cobbles and in these conditions. Now let's talk about the Americans because wow, what a ride by the Americans from the United States because even if Jorgensen didn't succeed today, we saw Magnus Sheffield, Ineos Grenadiers finish sixth, going further back, Riley Sheehan in his first full year as a professional after winning Perry Tour last year as a stagier, finished 13th. Then Matteo Jorgensen, bless his heart. He tried today. He was wiped out. I think he finished back there in 31st. I tried to stop him here at the finish. He came across the line. He was clearly upset with himself. Mateo, you shouldn't be. You rode a heck of a ride today. Rode down to the bus. Down there, he spoke with some journalists, and I heard what he had had to say. He said he did his best, but afterwards, it was lights out. Perhaps they need to rethink things going into 2025, how they prepare so he's ready in that final after a long push, after a long and successful push that didn't just quite work out in those final 40 kilometers. And of course, when you're up against a rider like Matthew Vanderpool, one of the greatest of his generation. So it's Matthew Vanderpool taking his third victory in the Tour of Flanders today here in Odenard 2024. We're celebrating the Dutchman, the world champion Vanderpool.